So it's Thursday afternoon. It's been exactly one week since my last vlog and eight days since I broke my toe. Since then, I've been back to the doctor's office a few times. Twice, uh, I've had x-rays. First time on Saturday, and then again yesterday. And I talked to the doctor on Saturday. He said everything looked like it was uh, gonna set well and I didn't need surgery, which was good news. And then yesterday, he told me it was looking really nice and uh, healing should progress without any issues. So I'm feeling much more confident about walking now. The whole point of the brace is just to protect my toe, to stop me from doing more damage to it. And the whole point of staying off my feet is the same. The more I walk, the bigger the chance I'll do something to disrupt my recovery. So I'm on my way to the doctor's office now for more of the low-level laser therapy. I've been doing that every day this week. I'm gonna do it again tomorrow and Saturday. Saturday I'm having another x-ray and another consultation with the doctor and we'll go from there. So on the way to the doctor's office, I was going to stop by this little coffee shop. They have some really good espresso, a few different ways of serving it. But the best thing on their menu, as far as I'm concerned, is this tiramisu they have. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. I wish I could impart to you how amazing it is. It's the kind of thing they put it in front of me and it's got a life expectancy of about 60 seconds or less. But the thing is they close at three and I was gonna leave my house around 1 2 o'clock, go by there, get some coffee and tiramisu and go to the doctor. But I was doing some work this morning and it was a very productive morning. And I just, I was in the zone completely lost track of time. Got a lot of work done, but I'm not gonna be able to have my tiramisu today. The place closes at three and it's almost three. So going straight to the doctor and getting my low, low level laser therapy. See, I can't even speak English these days. So that's another quick, easy, inexpensive visit to the doctor out of the way. And now I'm gonna go to Starbucks, fill up my tumbler, and then I will talk to you about what I wanna talk about today. So yeah, I got uh, a tumbler full of the drip coffee, what they call the coffee of the day, Onu Day coffee. But uh, I couldn't resist a little bit of a guilty pleasure here. This is toffee nut latte. We don't get the pumpkin spice. I wish we did, but we don't. But the toffee nut latte is an annual seasonal thing here. Usually late November into the early new year and uh, sweet, but I really, really like it. Right, so what's on my mind today is change. You know, I had a friend and mentor several years ago, almost 30 years now, and I was, you know, in my mid-20s, he was coming into his mid-40s. I'm just starting learning how to adult, and, you know, he's entering middle age, and he had a lot on his mind in those days. And we were sitting out on his balcony one afternoon, and he turns to me and he says, you know, Mike, I think I've figured out the meaning to life. And I'm like, yeah, what is it? And he says, change. So I first touched down in Korea on June 5th of 1991. And 
at the time, I had no idea what I was getting into. I knew basically two things about Korea. One, that there was a war here that the U.S. had been involved with somehow. And two, there was a long-running sitcom about the war, or set in the war, that I used to love as a kid. But now, I know a lot more. And, you know, Korea had a very tumultuous 20th century. It started at the end of the 19th century when Western powers and Imperial Japan were vying for influence here. And, you know, Japan eventually annexed Korea. And then at the end of World War II, Korea established the, their first post-Japan government. And then they went right into the Korean War in the early 1950s. The country was in ruins, the economy was shattered, and then they had a dictatorship from the early 60s into the 80s. Two dictators actually, the first one was assassinated in 1979, and then another one took his place a, a year or so later. And in 1987, I believe it was, is when they had their first post-dictatorship elections. And No Te Wu was the winner a former general who worked with the previous dictator. But he was president when I first got here. And, you know, this was like the beginning of modern Korean politics. But during the previous 25 years or so, the Korean economy had really, really ballooned. They were calling it the miracle on the Han River. By the early 1980s, Korea for the first time had a middle class. So, you know, the people that I met and got to know in the early 90s when I first got here, they had only just begun to get out into the world. And, you know, if I talk to people who were in their 40s or 50s, it was their children who were benefiting from all of this. They themselves, you know, they didn't know anything about the rest of the world, really, very little, except what they saw on TV and stuff. You know, I, the stereotypes about Americans, you know, one of the things, uh, hamburgers. Every time a Korean would invite me to lunch, what do you want, a hamburger? <laughs> it's like we eat hamburgers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, I, I'm sure I know some people who do, but no, I'm not one of them. Give me your, you know, tenjang chige. I wanna try this Korean stuff that I, that I really like or that I've never tried before. Why would I want a hamburger? I'm in Korea. And it was not uncommon for people to tell me that I was the first foreigner they'd ever met in person and spoken to in person. You know, all the stereotypes, they're gone. Nobody ever tells me anymore that I'm the first foreigner they've ever met. You know, there are people in Korea who know more about American culture than I do these days. And, you know, in other ways, like back in the 90s, any business people you talk to, many of them had a difficult time accepting that they weren't a, a poor country, that they were a developed country, not developing. I mean, yeah, their economy continued to, to grow into the 90s, but they had joined the ranks of developed economies by then. And it wasn't, you know, until well into the 2000s, I think, that, you know, they started to get that confidence that, yeah, we, we've arrived, at least, you know, in my conversations with people. That's, that's my own experience I'm talking about here. Today, they're like the 13th largest economy in the world and just you know 60 years ago 70 years ago they were a country in, in tatters so why the crash course in modern Korean history well something I've come to learn it's that Koreans are used to change if anybody is I mean when you think of the questions of how much and how often for them, it's a lot all the time. And, you know, especially here in Seoul, I mean, I'm sure any metropolitan city is going to change pretty rapidly, but in Seoul, it is so head spinning. It's like if you step away from a neighborhood for a year or two, it's going to be different by the time you get back. Uh, that, that's what it feels like sometimes. But seriously, though, if you were here in Korea in the 90s and left and you came back today, You'd have to learn everything over again. I mean, it's almost like being in a different country. The people are different. The places are different. The culture has changed to some degree. 
a lot of social taboos have disappeared and it's a completely different place. And you know, when I go back to the States, I don't feel like I'm going back to a different place. It still feels like it always has. And I've been here in the middle of all the changes and I still can't keep up with them. I mean, change happens so fast here, I, I can't even escape it in my vlog, right? I mean, just a minute ago, it was Thursday afternoon. Now it's Friday afternoon. But the good thing about it being Friday is that I get another chance to go have the tiramisu and they're still open. Let's go. All right, so look at this little street here, huh? It's, it's tiny, right? There's no reason to come here really. It's a shortcut to these apartments up there. Not much more than that. There's a, there's a busy back street over here with a lot of uh, shopping and stuff. We're right behind a, a little grocery store. Then there's a little you know street up here that gets a lot of back and forth traffic, but not a lot of people come here. It's not the kind of place you'd expect to find a really nice coffee shop, but look at this. Back in the day, you wouldn't find a shop like this on a little street like this. And I mean, really back in the day, you wouldn't find a shop like this at all anywhere. But you just didn't see, you know, consumer facing shops on a, on a place like this. But now they're all over the place. And that's one of the reasons why I love walking souls back streets. It's, you never know what you're gonna find. But right now, I know what I'm gonna find here and that's some tiramiso and espresso. Uh, let's go. that was good really 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 good going back to my old friend you know I don't know if there is a meaning to life or you know I'm, I'm not a person who's looking for it but I do get where he was coming from I mean on the other side of 30 years I, I have a lot more context that I didn't have back then and yeah change is definitely a constant in our lives even if it's not necessarily the meaning of life. We all have to deal with it to some degree or another. Sometimes it affects us directly, sometimes it affects us indirectly. Some change we want to see, some change we don't. Often it's just a natural resistance we have to changes that are out of our control or that we didn't expect. So I've learned a lot of things from living in Korea, but one of the biggest is that you just can't avoid change. I mean, it happens so fast here. I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I talk about the scale and the scope and, and the rate of change. It's head spinning, it really is. I've talked about this sometimes with other people who have lived here for a long time, Koreans and expats like myself. And yeah, it's something we all have to deal with. And I've learned, you know, just to accept it. Now, from my perspective, this rapid, pace of change here is a big positive. I, I love the fact that I can constantly rediscover Korea and that's actually one of the reasons why I started this vlog and, and this YouTube channel is because I, I kind of got caught in a bubble for a little while and I was missing out on a lot of the changes taking place. And I've only started to emerge again in, in recent months and you know part of that was because of the corona virus, I think. Another part of it was because of age. You know, I've, I've just changed. I'm not the adventuring explorer I used to be, but I want to be. 
and that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to go out and walk 10,000 steps every day, you know, when I don't have a broken toe. You know, I was watching some travel vlogs not long ago uh, from people who had visited Korea, and I was amazed at some of the things they knew about the country. Because, let's put it this way, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, early days of the internet, anytime I told anybody I lived in Korea, very frequently, surprisingly frequently, the response was, North Korea? Like, duh, of course not. <laughs> but that's how little people knew about Korea back then. Now, people know things about Korea that I didn't know. And it's, it's interesting. I mean, since when did KFC become Korean fried chicken? I, I, that blew my mind to hear people talking about coming to Korea to eat KFC. To me, it's just fried chicken, right? So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to catch up on a lot of the changes that I've missed out on and seeing how Korea, Korea continues to change going into the future. It's one of the most exciting things about living here. So yeah, it is Friday and I'm back at the doctor's office for more of the low level laser therapy. Got it right that time. And you know, we started the vlog on the way here yesterday afternoon. So today I'm gonna end it right here as I go up and get my treatment. And I will be back this weekend. Yeah. And before I go, I should tell you, I've got a little bonus for you that I've put together. It's something I did for my other YouTube channel. I've got a three year retrospective of the walks that I've done. It's a 20 minute video, 25 minute it's gonna be, but I've included one segment here at the end of this vlog because it's related to the topic. You'll see. See you later. Stop recording. I hope my eyes are always miles down the road. We must be moving faster than we know. And we know. Goodbye. I've always had a problem with goodbye. Wipe away the pain before it dries Before it's dry Been down every beaten path Just trying to find what's built to last But everything's changing Faces and the scenes around me I'm holding a moment But the castle's in the sand Yeah, they're gonna fall down Walk all night to leave my footprints in the snow Cause maybe change is all I'll ever know Yeah, maybe change is all I'll ever know In my head I'm running through the things I left unsaid And others that I wish I could take back Can't take it back So tonight I'm chasing cars on Highway 95 Listening to songs that make me cry But I'm alright Been down every beaten path Just trying to find what's built to last But everything's changing The faces and the scenes around me 
castles in the sand Yeah, they gonna fall down Walk all night and leave my footprints in the snow Cause maybe change is all I'll ever know Yeah, maybe change is all I'll ever know changing the faces and the scenes around me i'm holding a moment but the castles in the sand yeah they're gonna fall down walk all night and leave my footprints in the snow Cause maybe change is all i'll ever know yeah maybe change is all i'll ever know maybe change is all i'll ever know 